everyone. Welcome back to another video of Sis Q Knickknacks, my resale channel. You see links below to my other channels down below. It's my cooking channel and my husband's channel, Brother Claude Reflex, and gardening channel that we do occasionally when the weather's nice outside. There'll be a link to my book website, which is animalsliftourspirits.com. That showcases especially about the book I published last year called Animals. Awesome venture, Miss Kenya. <laughs> I forgot. <laughs> you wrote it. If you can't remember the title. There it is, right there. <laughs> you can see it for yourself. <laughs> awesome Adventures of Miss Kitty and her Woodland Friends. It's available on Amazon and eBay, uh, Barnes and Noble, and iTunes. And if you and go to the website, Animals Lift Our Spirits, there's a little little button on there that take you right to Amazon in two seconds, if that long. Okay, you want to tell them who Miss Kitty is? It's cute outside and staying nice and warm in the garage at the moment because it's pretty cold here. Well, we got cold weather coming in tomorrow. It's going to drop like from 60 today down to 20 tomorrow night. And with snow coming in, maybe and a lot of freezing rain, all that bad stuff. So she's staying warm out in the garage with a little heat pad in her little bed. And she loves it out there when it's warm. Okay, right now I had a really good sale. I was on my way to the post office and cha-ching, my bu buzzer went off again. So I thought I'd better see what I sold. And look, you see down here. A set of these six mugs here. So just my full asking price too. Not my sale price. They also six of these for $39.99. $39 and these came from Dollar Tree. I sell lots of Dollar Tree mugs and glasses all the time. And this is kind of, it's owner stock. Dollar Tree hasn't had these for several years. That's why they, they sell so easy. When I do come across a few, I grab them. Because these are very popular I don't know, four or five years ago, they came in black and blue and green. I can't find any of the green at all. But when they do get just a few in, I grab them because a lot of people like to replace ones they have if they break some or they want some more. And these are my best-selling mug because they're hard to find. And I'm assuming, you know, Dollar Tree's probably not all over the nation. I don't think it's everywhere, but it's a lot of places. I think that's why I sell these so often. Like I said, I paid a dollar a piece and all six sold for $40. Plus shipping. Now I'll, I'll wrap. I'll show you how I wrap one. I'm very careful in wrapping mugs and glassware. First thing you do, see that hollow spot? You have to fill in any void. That just helps stabilize the outside a little better. It takes about two or three little bags in there. There, that's filled in. Then I take this this gooey stuff, this saran wrap, <laughs> cellophane. And I wrap all around, well, one second here. One more little step I just had to think of. Have some bubble wrap. I always like to wrap the handle up securely so it doesn't get knocked off and broken. So I double secure the end handles on mugs and glassware and stems. See there? Like that. And then I put this around it. This is added security just by chance, just in case it gets broken in shipment. All the pieces will be together. They'll stay contained in this in this cellophane. There's less chance of somebody maybe cutting their hand when they reach in for it if it is broken. But so far, I've been pretty lucky. I take live precaution on wrapping it extra carefully. Oh, I left a spot. And so far, everything arrives intact. I get a lot of good feedback and compliments on how well I wrap stuff for my customers. Okay. And I don't want to forget when I get through to include a thank you card. I always put a thank you card in there. Now I'm going to wrap it extra, a little bit extra in this bubble wrap. I put a lot of bubble wrap on it. I usually keep going around till you don't see the item in the bubble wrap. See, pop, pop. That looks pretty good there. I don't see the item. It look, it feels firm. And off here, I'm going to secure this with a little tape right there. Then I'm going to wrap the ends with more tape. Find my end here. There it is. I already fold the piece back so you can find this. When I 
put these in the box, I always put some more cardboard or paper plates in between each one so they don't hit each other. You don't want your items breaking each other in transit. I keep a lot of paper plates on hand for shipping breakables. Paper plates are great for extra protectant. Okay, now I'm going to do the rest of these and then we'll put them in the box. I'll be right back. Easy, yeah. You ready? Okay. Yeah. Uh, my husband pointed out to me I made a little bit of boo boo error. These are not paper plates, they are foam plates. Foam, foam, foam. The foam ones are foamy, they're softer <laughs> than paper. They have more of a cushion to them. They're very similar to what we call the, the peanuts, which I hate foam peanuts. But the foam plates are great. I keep a lot of those on stock when I can find them at the store. I don't usually buy hefty, they're higher price. I usually get just off brand like Walmart, Kroger, any off brand would do just as good. But if I can't find the off brand, I will get the name brand if I have to. It just costs a little bit more. Okay. Now we'll be back soon to finish these. And you see now down here, I got all six of them down here <laughs> wrapped up. I take my thinking card to one of the items. If I lay it down there loose and the wrapping, it's going to get thrown out maybe. So I put it where the customer can find it all the time. And this is actually the, this is going to be the bottom of the box when I flip it over. So I want to put padding on the bottom of it before I flip it. I tested several sizes to see what would fit. This is a 17 by 11 by 13. I usually like to use 14 by 14 by 12, but they are getting hard to find at Walmart. I can't find those anymore. They've been putting these out all the time. So now I'm going to wad up a lot of my paper here. Either this paper or this brown paper, either one. And fill in the sides. You want to fill all your void, all your little holes, little gaps. We'll fill all the gaps in with paper. I'm putting some of these foam plates on the sides here. I put one on every side and I put them between the cups also. Because you don't want the cups hitting each other. See how that divides them apart? Actually, let me move this one this way maybe. There. Okay. Now I'm going to put uh, any type of stuffing I can find. Just going to do, I keep all excess packing material that comes to me in the mail. It comes in handy. down in there. I want to put a, this extra cardboard. I, I cut up boxes sometimes. They're too weak to ship in, but I cut them up to use like this for extra support. Just to make your sides stronger when they get if they get hit in transit. another plate right down there in that side okay now we'll put some this, remember this is the bottom of the box I'm going to flip over in a few seconds put a little more cushion there Reinforce the sides here. They always reinforce the sides so they don't pop up when they're getting when they're in transit being shipped. When they're being thrown around by the carriers, whoever handles them in transit. How are you going to ship this? More than likely UPS. Anything heavy like this, anything that's going to be over usually four or five pounds, I'll ship UPS or FedEx. Never post them because they are too high on their prices. You can ship it for half the price going UPS or FedEx. Now we're going to secure the other side. Put lots of stuff on this side.
and some of these on top here. There. Extra space in there for them to move around at all. See how this paper kind of bounces with it and it gets hit. That's good. Okay. Now the final. Final tape it up, we'll be about done. I do the sides here. This is going a long way from I'm in Mississippi, it's going to New York. We've got quite a ways to travel. I have shipped a lot of glassware and stemware to far, far off as Australia, uh, China, UK, and so far everything's made it intact. I'm going to put a few more pieces across here. This eBay tape is a little thin. Some people complain about it. It is a little thin. And it is. That's why I put a little extra on there. But I don't mind using it because I get it free with my, um, since I have a store on eBay. I haven't had to buy tape in two years since I've been getting this on there. And it gets the job done. I've had no complaints from customers about it not holding up. on these packages considering all the uh, handling they hand they go through okay. now we're ready for our placement of stickers on here I'm gonna pause it I get everything all that together Okay, this is the fun part of my packing, sticking the labels on. I love playing with labels. Look at here. Even though my shipping label has my return, I still put another little return address on here in case that shipping label gets damaged or pulled off. So the package will come back to me if nowhere else. Don't want to get lost. I put a nice big eBay thank you. Put that on all my packages right there. I put one of these on there. See what it says to the customer? I always put one of these on every package I ship. Oh, what can I put? put it there? I put another added little thank you on the outside of the box. After all, you can't say thank you enough to your customers. They are the ones that keep you in business. I put one of those on my package somewhere. And now, my fragile. And I know there's a lot of debate going on right now about whether to use fragile or not. Whether the post office or whoever actually pays attention to it. And I gotta admit, sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. Some will pay attention to it, some won't. But mm. since you don't know if they will or won't, go ahead and use it. How do you know that they don't? Well, there's actually, I don't know, there's just been some carriers say mm. they don't have time to pay attention to it, to look at it. Or whether there's things are thrown around, thrown around in there, you would think, yeah, they're not looking at the fragile thing. But then, some do. If you can, if you don't want to use stickers, you can just write on there with a magic marker, either way. But I'd rather be safe than sorry. I'd rather know that I did all I could to get it there one piece. I hate to think that maybe if I didn't put a fragile sticker on it, it would have helped. And I didn't put it on there. So I do go ahead and put it on there. I put one on every put side. On side. I put on all six sides, yes. So no, matter, no matter how they pick it up, it can be seen. At least it gives me peace of mind knowing that I did all I could to get it to my customer in one piece. Once it leaves me and gets to the carrier or to the who is going to deliver it, well, that's up to them. I can't be responsible for what they do. I can only be responsible for what I do. I'll do everything I can in my power to keep it safe. 
Now, moment of judgment. Time to weigh it. Sandwich is going to weigh. See if the customer, I charged the customer enough for this. I think I did. I always charge flat rate. I don't do calculated shipping unless it's overseas, international. Domestic, I use flat rate. I kind of judge things ahead of time and weigh them. And whatever I weigh, when I list the item, I usually double the weight of it. That allows for all the packing material on the box and all that stuff. And usually I'm okay. I'm never short. If I'm a few cents short on one, I might be a few cents over another package. So evens, it evens out. Here's my little scale down here. I put this big thing on the floor. Let's sit there a second. Okay, it says 9.7. I want to do it twice just to make sure it's right. I hear it, so she. I do too. She is not a happy little girl. 9.7. Right no, she, she cannot dead. see me. She likes to see dead in her sight all the time. 9.7. And pause it while I run my label. There, I have my packing all done here. I'm packed and ready to go. I'm taking it to UPS today. I'm on my way there to a few other things. The shipping ran just a little under $18, which is fine because I charged the buyer $22 for flat rate shipping. The little extra will help buy more packing material. After all, these boxes I get from Walmart and the, that saran wrap and the bubble wrap, it's not free. I gotta buy it. So it has come out of my little profit I make like this. Now, the only time I do... Uh, refund some shipping back to a customer so if they buy more than one thing for me and I can pack it together then I will refund a little of the shipping but normally like this if something runs gives me extra two three dollars that doesn't helps me buy more stuff I do use reuse things I get in the mail myself but that's not enough I have to still buy uh, items myself to use well here we go off to UPS and I'll see y'all later bye for now have a good week happy thrifting